السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد First and foremost we thank Allah سبحانه وتعالى the one who has given us the opportunity to hold this uh, webinar and secondly uh, i would like to apologize on behalf of the masjid for a technical issue we just faced uh, alhamdulillah we managed to get uh, live on the masjid main uh, youtube page a youtube channel the webinar today is about the tajweed so this is a uh, one quick brief session uh, in which we'll be discussing uh, certain uh, topics with regards to the tajweed and here is the content of uh, today's webinar inshallah that we are going to go through uh, we'll have introduction and then definition of tajweed the most important topics of tajweed the importance of uh, tajweed mistakes in reciting the quran and uh, uh, pronunciation of harakat then definition of makhraj or makharij and the definition of sifa or sifat and the rules and ahkam so as you can see in the list there's a quite a lot that needs to be covered in this webinar i will try my best to cover it within uh, less than an hour inshallah al-aziz so let's start inshallah with the introduction in the introduction the main thing that we are going to look at is uh, the method by which or the methods by which the quran has been transmitted to us how was the quran conveyed to us the quran the book of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reached us by the following uh, two ways uh, throughout the generations of the muslim right from the beginning uh, of the history uh, during the time of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam then the companions then the students of the companions ridwanullahi alaihi majma'in and then uh, so on so the quran has reached us uh, throughout all these generations uh, via these two methods or the ways of transmission written transmission which is documented and which is called mushaf or copy of the quran usually we say and secondly quran was conveyed to us through oral transmission which includes phonic conveyance uh, or recitation of the quran so generation after generation the quran has been conveyed and transmitted through oral transmission so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam transmitted and conveyed the quran to the companions and the companions to their students and their students to their students like this so let's quickly look at the first one which is the written transmission as soon as the quran was sent to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam each verse or word was written in front of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so this is something that we find in the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the books of the seerah uh, and uh, there are many narrations that confirm that as soon as the quran was revealed to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam it was written zaid bin thabit radiyallahu ta'ala anhu one of the writers of the quran amongst the companions ridwanullahi al majma'in says that i used to write the revelation while i was with the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he sallallahu alaihi wasallam would dictate to me when i would finish he would say read and then i would read it to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam if there was any fault any mistake he sallallahu alaihi wasallam would correct it 
and then I would go out to convey it to the people. So this is one of the writers of the Quran, uh, which is called Zaid bin Thabit radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, but obviously there were other companions, Ridwanullah who used to write the Quran. Then the companions would write the Quran on the pieces of wood, palm leaves, parchments, or whatever, what, whatever was available uh, to them. They would write the, those verses uh, that would have been revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then each companion, such as Zaid bin Thabit radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and other companions, Ridwanullahi Ali Majma'een, those who knew how to write. Uh, bear in mind, not all the companions, uh, Ridwanullahi Ali Majma'een, were familiar with writing. There were some who used to write and they learned uh, the writing, so they were the one who used to write the Quran. So the companion Ridwanullahi Ali Majma'een, those who would write the Quran or the revelation or the verses of the Quran, they would write and then they would keep their scroll or their copies with them. A kind of, uh, uh, you can say, uh, yeah, it would be a private uh, notebook. Okay. Then during the era and during the time of Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu, all the writings on scrolls were compiled together under the supervision of a committee. Uh, of senior reciters headed by Zaid bin Thabit radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Zaid bin Thabit, as he said, is one of the reciters of the Quran amongst the companions, Ridwanullahi al majma'een one of the writers of the Quran. Uh, Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu, on the suggestion of uh, Sayyiduna Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he set up this committee and he appointed Zaid radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the head of the committee. So Zaid radiallahu ta'ala anhu, along with his committee members, they compiled all the scrolls uh, on which the Quran was written and it was compiled in the form of a book. Then the time passed and during the time of uh, Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, one master copy of the Quran or the Mus'haf which was known and which is still known until today is a Mus'haf Uthmani. Mus'haf Uthmani O, at that time it was called Mus'haf Imam, a master copy of the Quran was produced from which several copies were written. One copy of the Quran was sent to each of the Muslim territories along with an expert reciter to teach the people. So it was uh, written as well as the oral transmission. As we said at the beginning, the Quran has been transmitted to us through both ways, written transmission as well as oral. So Uthman radiallahu ta'ala, when he produced the master copy of the Quran and he instructed uh, that master copy to be copied, uh, it was done and then he sent those copies to different uh, regions in which the Muslim population was at that time. And Uthman radiallahu ta'ala, when he sent those copies of the Quran, he sent also an expert reciter of the Quran who could teach people how to read from that copy. And uh, he would also correct their mistakes and he would correct their pronunciation. And then obviously after that, Muslims wrote down countless copies of the above mentioned ones. So this was the written transmission. And then obviously, you know, generation after generation, Quran has been written uh, in different forms and it, it, it has reached us this way. And the second one was uh, the oral transmission. The oral transmission, first and foremost, it was transmitted to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam through Jibreel Alaihi Salatu Wasallam, Sayyidul Malaika, the chief of the angels. Uh, Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam, he brought the Quran to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam uh, read it to his companions, Ridwanullahi al majma'een. He sallallahu alayhi wasallam would recite the Quran on them as Allah says in the Quran, huwa alladhi ba'atha fil ummiyyina rasoolan minhum yatlu alayhim ayati. 
the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This was one of the core duties and the responsibilities and the obligations of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to recite the Quran uh, on his companions bidwanullahi alayhi majma'in. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam fulfilled his obligation. He would recite the Quran to his companions bidwanullahi alayhi majma'in, and then the companions, as you said. Some of them, they would write it and some others would just memorize it. The companions of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then conveyed the Quran to those who followed them in the same way and so on until the Quran reached us. So the, the reason we have mentioned these two ways of the transmission of the Quran is to highlight a fact and a very important point which is that Quran, uh, the way it needs to be recited, it has been conveyed to us from the Prophet وسلم, through his companions and, the and then the students of the companions and then the imams and then, they and then their followers and their students until it has reached us. So the, when we talk about the tajweed, or the correct pronunciation of the Quran, we must be in mind then that the correct pronunciation of the Quran has been conveyed to us all the way from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So it is not only a copy of the Quran or written uh, script of the Quran uh, or the copy of the Quran uh, from which you can read as you wish or as you like, rather it is also important to read the Quran the way it has been orally transmitted to us. And when we say, you know, that we have to read the Quran the way it has been orally uh, transmitted to us, we actually refer to the rules of the Tajweed. So now uh, let's move on to this topic of Tajweed, the definition of Tajweed. What does Tajweed mean? Lexically or linguistically, Tajweed means to make something better. From Jawada, Yujawidu Tajweed, to make something better or to improve something. So, this is the linguistic meaning of the word Tajweed. Technically, when we say a science of the Quran, which is known as Tajweed, it actually refers to the science through which the knowledge of correct pronunciation of Arabic letters is achieved by learning the articulation points and their characteristics, as well as the rules that originate in them. So there are three things, the articulation points, then uh, also the characteristics of the letters and also the related rules. And we'll uh, discuss in, 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 uh, in inshallah shortly in a bit of detail. Okay, so the most important topics of the Tajweed are three. So this is uh, when we say that, you know, we want to learn Tajweed or you say that you want to learn Tajweed. So these are the three main areas you should be focusing on or you need to focus on. Okay, Tajweed or learning Tajweed is not... A uh, rocket science that you know you do one day you start and then within a week or within few hours you finish no rather you have to go through the details of these three topics makharijul huruf sifatul huruf and al ahkam makharijul huruf means articulation points of arabic letters sifatul huruf refers to characteristics of letters and al ahkam refers to the rules such as as we are going to mention later, inshallah. Okay, so these are the things. So we are going to go through the, uh, you know, uh, the details of this. But before that, it is important to understand the importance of Tajweed. Reading the Quran, and uh, you know, everyone must pay attention to this. Reading the Quran with correct pronunciation of letters is obligatory, and it is fard, it is wajib. Okay, reading the Quran with correct pronunciation is the obligation upon every single Muslim. So it means that you cannot escape 
this obligation by presenting an excuse that you do not know how to pronounce the Quran correctly or you have never studied Tajweed. Studying the rules of Tajweed is highly recommended. So you don't necessarily have to know the names of the rules. You don't have to know the names of the rules. As long as your pronunciation is correct, it is sufficient. But it is highly, recommend, it is highly recommended that you learn the Tajweed rules because this is the science by which or through which you improve your or you learn the pronunciation of the letters of the Quran. And the scholars, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon them, those who have compiled these rules and they have made easy for us the pronunciation of the letters of the Quran. So that is why it is very important to understand that reading the Quran with correct pronunciation is obligatory. And when we say something obligatory in the, in, in, in the religion of Allah or something compulsory or wajib or fard, it means if you do not fulfill it, you will be sinful. It is that important. Because we are going to mention uh, shortly if you do not read the Quran the way it needs to be read, if you do not recite the Quran with correct pronunciation, then it means what? You will be reading wrong letters. You will, you will be pronouncing the letters incorrectly. And when you pronounce a letter incorrectly, it can change the meaning. And when it changes the meaning, this is because of which you are going to be sinful. That is why it is important to also understand that there are some mistakes in reciting the Quran. And if you know these mistakes and how these mistakes are made, then you may understand the importance of Tajweed and significance of Tajweed or the reason why learning Tajweed or the rules of Tajweed is so important and so crucial when it comes to the reading and the recitation of the Quran. The mistakes, the scholars have said, the mistakes are of two types. Allahnul Jali and Allahnul Khafi. Allahnul Jali, which is a clear mistake, or it is also uh, called a major mistake. The clear mistake is a major mistake. And Allahnul Khafi is a hidden mistake, which is a minor mistake. Okay. It is called clear mistake because Anyone who is familiar with the Arabic language, not even with the Tajweed rules, the one who knows the Arabic language, he can pick up that mistake and it will be classed as a major mistake. Even an ordinary person who knows the correct pronunciation of the Arabic letters, not necessarily the Quran, okay? So he can pick up that mistake and that mistake, that kind of mistake is called major mistake. And we are going to give some examples of this, inshallah. And the hidden mistake is the mistake that those who are well versed with the, uh, with the science of the Jui, they can pick up that mistake. Okay. Let's look at some of the uh, examples of uh, clear mistakes, okay? Mainly, you can categorize them into four categories, okay? The first one is changing haraka, changing haraka. For example, in Surah Al-Fatiha, we read, صِرَاطَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ If you were to read Dhamma, on ta, instead of saying an amta, you say an amtu, it will change the meaning. Because in the ayah you say sirat al an amta alayhim, because this ayah is linked to the previous ayah in which uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to the straight path. And sirat al an amta alayhim means, oh Allah, guide us 
O oh Allah, guide us to the path of those on whom you have bestowed your favors. O oh Allah, you have bestowed your favors. But if you say an'am tu, it will mean, O oh Allah, guide me to the path of those on whom I have bestowed my favors. Na'udhu billah. Who are you to bestow your favors upon people? Okay, so it changes the meaning. Just a, a small negligence or carelessness or ignorance can change the meaning. That is why it is a major mistake. The second example is changing a letter. So in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says they use the word فَكَثَّرَكُمْ so Allah says that you were small in number and Allah has increased you. Okay. So instead of saying kathara, which is which is with tha, you say kasarakum. Fakasarakum. Kasara means uh, he broke you. So it changes the meaning completely. Likewise, stretching, stretching the letter that that should not be stretched or the letter that must not be stretched for example in surah yusuf allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the women of misr when they saw sayyiduna yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam they cut their hands their fingers so if you stretch na it means you have added alif and when you added alif it changed the meaning. Qatta'ana means they, those female, they cut their fingers. And qatta'ana means we cut their fingers. So it changes the meaning just because of this small mistake. Although it is we may consider it small, but in reality it is a major mistake because it changes the meaning. Likewise, shortening the letters that needs to be stretched, you don't stretch it. It is a mistake. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, خَلَقْنَا إِنَّا خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ وَإِنَّا خَلَقْنَاهُ وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا Allah says, we created. Obviously, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator. And he says, we created. And so, خَلَقْنَا When you pronounce خَلَقْنَا You have to stretch the sound of noon because there is alif after noon. But if you don't stretch it and you read it, khalaqna, khalaqna means those female, those females created. So who are you created by? By Allah or by females? So it changes the meaning. That is why the scholars have said it changes the meaning, hence it nullifies the prayer. Na'udhu billahi min Look at the ruling and the verdict of the scholars. That uh, you know, if you don't pronounce the, you know, uh, the letters of the Quran properly, the way the Quran needs to be recited, if you don't recite that way, then it can change the meaning. And if when it changes the meaning, then it affects your salah and actually destroys your salah. Okay, so that is why it is crucial it is compulsory upon every single muslim upon every single muslim to recite the quran the way it needs to be recited i.e with correct pronunciation with correct pronunciation it is important okay the other mistake other type of mistake we said is the hidden mistake Hidden mistake means a minor mistake we, which may not change the meaning, but it is, uh, uh, you know, against the etiquettes of the Quran or etiquettes of the reading of the Quran. Okay. For example, here uh, we have mud. In Surah Al Fatiha, on the last word, you say, غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا الضَّالِّينَ So you have to stretch it. You have to stretch it. You have to stretch it. If you don't stretch, then, and you say وَلَا الضَّالِّينَ 
okay? Although it does not change the meaning, but it is not the way of reading the Quran or this particular word. This is not the way by which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tore Al-Fatiha to his companion. This is not the way by which the companions tore Surat Al-Fatiha to their students. Rather, the way the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught his companions was to stretch Why? Because of what we said at the beginning, the Quran has been transmitted to us through oral transmission. Orally. So each teacher has recited the Quran to his students or the student has read it to the teacher and teacher has corrected the mistakes. Likewise, uh, inna, which is with the, it is called gunna, when you hold the sound of the noon in the nose and you say inna ladina. If you don't say inna ladina, rather you say inna ladina, although it does not change the meaning, but it is against uh, the, uh, the, you know, the rules of uh, uh, the recitation of the Quran. Likewise, uh, adding gunna, so an'amta, you are not supposed to hold the sound of the noon in the nose, so you are not supposed to say an'amta, but if you do so, although it does not change the meaning, but it is not the correct way to pronounce. So it, it actually distorts the perfection of the recitation. It is considered negligence towards the Quran. It means you are not actually giving the Quran its due respect or its due right. Okay. okay. Uh, people usually make mistake in the pronunciation of harakat. And this is something that is very, very serious. Very serious. So Harakat is the plural of haraka. Haraka means movement. Basically, it refers to vowels. So there are three, you know, fatha, dhamma, kasra, fatha, which is, as you say, ba. Dhamma is bu, and kasra is bi. So the linguistic meaning of these words is fatha means to open, and you say it is called fatha because when you pronounce, your mouth or your lips actually open. You say ba. And likewise, when you say dhamma, your lips actually uh, join and you say bu. And kasra, it is as you are breaking something, b, t, th. So that is why these harakat or these vowels are named with these words uh, or these names, fatha, dhamma, and kasra. Okay. And the opposite of haraka is the sukun, which, is, which means, uh, uh, you know, uh, linguistically it means uh, being still, okay, and it refers to consonant, and it is as you hold the sound and you make the sound still. When you say, for example, ab, ab, ib, ub, o at, it, ut, so the sound is, is you know, becomes still. And then the uh, another one you have shadda, which is uh, basically means actually strong. And the letter that has shadda, it is actually uh, pronounced with emphasis and strongly. Okay. So, for example, the word rabba, you will pronounce it, you, you will pronounce the ba twice. Rabba, rab, as you have pronounced first ba, rab, and then second ba, ba, rabba, rabbi, rabbu, like this. Okay. And if you stretch those harakat, they create the sound of additional letter. For example, if you were to stretch fatha, so instead of ba, you say ba. When you say ba, it means you have pronounced ba and alif, ba. Likewise, if you stretch dhamma, and you say, instead of saying bu, you say bu, you stretch, the sound has created a wow. Likewise, kasra, when you say b, if you stretch it, and you say B, it is as if you have, if you have created Ya here. That is why it is very important to understand where the haraka or which letter needs to be stretched and which letter should not be stretched. Okay, so these are the names of these letters. And, uh, you know, when you study Tajweed, you can go into the details of this, inshallah. Okay.
our next uh, topic is the makhraj. Makhraj, what is makhraj? And this is something those who are familiar with the name tajweed or with the letter tajweed, you must know, you must have heard this uh, uh, word makhraj, makhraj. Makhraj again, linguistically, or the literal meaning of the word makhraj is the exit. Okay. For those who have traveled to Saudi Arabia or to other Arab countries, if you have traveled on motorway, you must have seen the sign on the motorway. Wherever there is exit, it is, there is a, you know, this sign, makhraj. Makhraj, it is written makhraj, means this is the exit. And the, technically, when we talk about the signs of Tajweed and we use the word makhraj, it means the place or the spot where the sound of the letter comes from. And uh, i.e. it is articulation point. For example, when I say ba, ba, so the ba is pronounced with these, with, 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 with the two lips. So the makhraj of ba is the lips. Okay. So, and when I say ta, ta, obviously ta is not pronounced from lips. Rather, it is pronounced from the tongue and tongue touches a particular spot within the mouth. So that is the makhraj of ta. So makhraj is actually the spot or the place from which the letter is pronounced. So makhraj is a singular and the plural of the makhraj of the word makhraj is makharaj. Makhraj is singular and makharaj is plural. Okay. When we uh, look at the uh, alphabets of the Arabic language, they are pronounced from one of these five articulation points. Five articulation points. The first one is halq, which is throat. Some letters, they are pronounced from throat that directly, although the sound comes from the throat of every single end. The sound of every letter comes from the throat. But it is not always because sometimes we have to uh, touch the tongue in a particular spot and then the letter is pronounced. So there are letters, <clears throat> certain letters that are pronounced from the actual throat. And then obviously there is detail. Um, we do not have time uh, to go into the detail of the makharaj because this is not the purpose of this webinar. The, the purpose of this webinar is to give you, you know, a kind of uh, taster of tajweed, inshallah. Okay. And, and, and to highlight the importance of tajweed. Okay. So this is uh, one of the uh, one of the articulation points, halq. And then the second one is jawf, which is the empty space inside the mouth. Okay, between your tongue and the upper palate, that space is called jawf. And then al-lisan wal asnan, which is the tongue and teeth. So as I said earlier on, that for in order to pronounce certain letters, your tongue must be touching certain spots. And then shafatan, two lips, and then khayshum, the nasal cavity. So these are the five makharaj. So when you study tajweed, you basically look at these makharaj and you learn, and you know, uh, you learn about each letter and the makharaj of each letter. So you learn how many letters are pronounced from halq, how many letters are pronounced from jawf, and from the empty space, from the tongue and teeth, how many letters are pronounced from lips, how many letters are pronounced from nasal cavity. So this is what you learn in Tajweed. Okay, so here is actually the table of all these makharaj and, you know, as I said, uh, five. So from halq, six letters are pronounced from jawf, uh, two letters, or the, uh, sorry, altogether five letters are pronounced and then from tongue and teeth. Uh, this is the list of the letters that are pronounced from tongue and teeth. And then from lips, four letters are pronounced. And from nasal cavity, two letters are pronounced. And some of the letters are pronounced from two spots. As you can see, you know, cough and ka. From both jawf as well as lisan and asnan from the tongue and teeth. Likewise, noon and meme, they are pronounced, you know, from different, you know, uh, spots as well as from nasal cavity. Okay. And then 
that along with the makhraj, another topic that you study in Tajweed is called sifa, which linguistically means quality or attribute or characteristic. Okay. Technically, when we talk about the science of Tajweed, sifa means a distinctive quality or, or a characteristic of a letter by which it is distinguished from other letters. Okay. For example, you have two letters that are, uh, you know, that sounds similar, very similar, which is cough and cough, cough and cough. Obviously, in English, you don't really differentiate between the sound of Q and K, although they are two different letters. But when it comes to pronunciation, you pronounce the same way. But in Arabic, it's different. So you have two letters, kaf and the letter qaf. Both are pronounced different way, and the way to distinguish is through learning the characteristics of the letters, both. So you have to learn the, you know, the quality of the letter Qaf and the quality of the letter Kaf. Okay. Likewise, Ta and Ta. Ta and Ta. Okay. So again, the, these are the two letters, very similar very similar uh, sound but they are the sound is or the pronunciation is distinguished by the characteristic or by their quality so this is called sifat and then obviously when it comes to sifat there is a, a detail of the sifat there are different type of sifat there are characteristics that has opposite and there are other characteristics that have no opposite and then they have you have uh, a sifat al arida the incidental uh, characteristics or uh, you know the characteristics that are found you know occasionally so for example the characteristics with opposite are these four they are categorized they are divided into four groups so uh, you have apparent and then the opposite of apparent is a whisper so the sound there are some letters that have a clear and apparent sound the other letters have a whisper sound okay likewise some letters are pronounced with full strength and the other letters are pronounced with softness and there are some that are in between and then you have the letters that are pronounced with elevation of the tongue some others they are pronounced while the tongue is lowered and then uh, certain there are letters that are pronounced with adhesion meaning when you pronounce your tongue actually stuck uh, your uh, you, uh, uh, your tongue sticks uh, uh, you know uh, uh, to the upper palate and there are other letters that when you pronounce them you don't actually uh, or your tongue doesn't stick to the upper palate rather uh, you know the empty space remains open so these are the characteristics that are known as uh, uh, characteristics with opposites. And then, you know, here is the detail of all together, they are nine. Okay, and then the characteristics without uh, opposites. So there are uh, other eight characteristics. Some of the letters have these characteristics, not all of them. Okay, so some letters have these characteristics. For example, a safir means whistling. So when you whistle, when you pronounce those letters, the sound of whistle comes, uh, such as the letter of seen, sod, za, like this. Okay. So, other, so these are the characteristics specifically for certain letters. And then you have, you know, you know some characteristics that are, that are found in the letters in certain conditions and they are absent in certain conditions. For example, there are letters that are pronounced sometimes heavy sometimes light for example a raw okay these are four raw and the and and the letter lam in the word allah and alif and noon for example a raw you don't always pronounce raw raw heavy rather sometimes you have to pronounce raw light okay for example uh, when you say ar-rahim Within Surah Al-Fatiha, later you say غيري. You don't say غيري. ري. No, ري. غيري. غيري. So sometimes Ra is pronounced uh, 
uh, heavy, sometimes is light. So these are the uh, you know uh, temporary characteristics of the letters. And then within Tajweed, you also study different rules. Okay, rules of the letters called Haruf al qamariya and Shamsiya, and rules of uh, Noon when there is Sukun on Noon. Rules of Tanween, rules of uh, Meme, uh, rules of uh, stretching and shortening or lengthening and shortening the rules of stopping way you should be stopping and ways permissible to stop where there is uh, you must stop where you cannot stop so all these rules are also taught in tajweed okay so now actually uh, unfortunately we can't take uh, live questions but uh, inshallah so this was a short kind of a quick tajweed taster so uh, hopefully within next few weeks, inshallah, we are going to launch our proper online Tajweed class. And it will be conducted online through this website, as you can see on the screen, uh, uh, Online Quran Institute. And the, there will be limited registration because in that class, we'll be studying the Tajweed rules as well as the practical side. So the students will be reading the Quran to the teacher and, uh, and the teacher will be correcting their mistakes and their pronunciation uh, based on those rules that they are going to study, inshallah. So uh, keep an eye on this website. And once the course is announced, uh, you will be able to register. And be in mind, as I said, there will be limited uh, number of students who will be allowed to join the class. And inshallah, it will run for a number of weeks. So soon, inshallah, it will be up. It will be it will be announced uh, on the Masjid uh, Facebook page and also inshallah on this website. We ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to increase us in our knowledge. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala give us tawfiq and ability to learn the Quran and to read the Quran the way it needs to be read. And may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala give us tawfiq to recite the Quran the way the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recited to his companions and the companions they taught their students and the Quran has reached to us in that way may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq innahu sami'un qareeb mujib subhanak allahumma wa bihamdik ashadu an la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh